Article 6 in the Constitution. All debts contracted and engagements entered into before the adoption of this Constitution shall be as valid against the United States under this Constitution as under the Confederation. Shall be valid against the United States under this Constitution. Shall be valid against the United States under this Constitution. The Constitution and the laws of the United States shall be made in pursuance thereof and all treaties and all treaties and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby anything in the constitution or laws of any state to the contrary notwithstanding the senators and representatives before mentioned and the members of the several state legislature and all executive and judicial officers shall both officers, both of the United States and of the several states, shall be bound by oath, shall be bound by oath, shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support this Constitution, but no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. The 1787 Treaty of Peace and Friendship. The Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the United States of America and His Imperial Majesty, the Emperor of Morocco, to all persons to whom these presents shall come or be made known, whereas the United States of America in Congress assembled by their commission bearing date the 12th day of May, 1,784, those proper, thought proper to constitute John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, and Thomas Jefferson, their ministers, plenipotentiary, giving to them of a majority of them, full powers to confer, treat, <coughs> excuse me, and negotiate with the ambassador <clears throat> minister or commissioner of his majesty the emperor of morocco concerning a treaty of amity and commerce <clears throat> to make and reserve receive propositions for such treaty and to conclude and sign the same transmitting it to the united states in congress assembled for their final ratification, and by one other commission bearing date the, el the 11th day of March, 1785, <clears throat> did further empower the said ministers plenipotentiary or a major of them by writing under their hands and seals to appoint such agent in the said business as they might think proper and with authority under the directions and injunctions of the said ministers to commence and persecute the said negotiations and conferences for the said treaty provided that the said treaty should be signed by the said ministers. And whereas we, the said John Adams and Thomas um, Jefferson, two of the said ministers plenipotentiary, the said Benjamin Franklin being absent by writing under the hand and seal of the said John Adams at London, October the 5th, 1785 and of the said Thomas Jefferson at Paris October the 11th of the same year did appoint Thomas Barclay agent in business aforesaid giving him the powers therein which by the said second commission we were authorized to give and the said Thomas Barclay in pursuance thereof hath arranged articles for a treaty 
of enmity and commerce between the United States of America and His Majesty the Emperor of Morocco, which articles written in the Arabic language confirmed by His said Majesty and Emperor of Morocco and sealed with his royal seal being translated into the language of the said United States of America, together with the attestation thereto annexed are the following words to wit, royal seal. In the name of an almighty God, this is the, a treaty of peace and friendship established between us and the United States of America which is confirmed and which we have ordered to be written in this book and sealed with our seal at our court of Morocco uh, of the tw 25th day of the blessed month of Shaban in the year 1200. Trusting in God, it will remain permanent. Article 1, we declare that both parties have agreed that this treaty consisting of 25 articles shall be inserted in this book and delivered to the Honorable Thomas Barclay and the agent of the United States, the agent of the United States now at our court, with whose approbation it has been made and who is duly authorized on this, their part to treat with us concerning all the matters contained therein. If Article, article, I think this is article one. If either of the parties shall be at war with any nation, whatever, the other party shall not take a commission from the enemy nor fight under their colors. Article, I think it's article two, it says article three. If either of the parties shall be at war with any nation, whatever, and take a prize belonging to that nation, and there shall be found on board subjects or effects belonging to either of the parties, and the subject shall be, shall be set at liberty, and the effects returned to the owners. And if any goods belonging to any nation with whom either of the parties shall be at war shall be loaded on vessels belonging to the other party, shall take pass, shall pass free unmolested without any attempt being made to take or detain them. I'm just going to read that one more time. Now, if you guys want a copy of this article, um, this 1787 Treaty of Peace and Friendship, you can go directly to the Moorish American Consulate where you can download it for free. If you want a copy from us here, you can contact us at themullings at gmail.com. We do ask for donations for our time to send it to everyone. Now, I'm going to read this one more time, and this is your remedy. All of you who are Moors out there, Article 6 and the 1787 Treaty of Peace and Friendship, as the consular courts never ended. We get our remedies all day, every day, whether we realize it or not. If either of the parties shall be at war with any nation, whatever, and take a prize belonging to that nation, and there shall be found on board subjects or effects belonging to either of the parties, the subject shall be at liberty, and the effects returned to the owners. And if any goods belonging to any nation with whom either of the parties shall be at war shall be loaded on vessels belonging to the other party, they shall pass free and unmolested without any attempt being made to take or detain them. A signal or pass shall be given to all vessels belonging to both parties by which they are to be known when they meet at sea. And if the commander of a sea, of a ship of war, of either party shall have other ships under the, his convoy, the declaration of the commander shall be alone, shall alone be sufficient to exempt any of them from examination. Now it goes on here, and if you scroll down, you'll see where it talks about the Moors, which this entire treaty is pertaining to us Moors, right? I don't think I'll have enough time to read. You guys like, share, subscribe. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for your support. 
Like, share, subscribe, and have yourself a great day.